significantly rising home prices, to the rising interest rates, the last few years have turned the dream of home ownership into more of a nightmare. And apparently we're not done yet. Future home buyers were hit again this week as the National Association of Realtors reached a settlement in the antitrust cases brought against them, creating confusion within the market and causing real estate stocks to plummet. So what does this all mean for sellers, for buyers, for realtors? I'm going to break it all down for you, but before I begin, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay a while. I want to hear your thoughts and questions in the comments below, and do be sure to give a big thumbs up if you find anything in here helpful or useful. All right, buyers, brace yourself, because this ruling could end up costing you even more if you aren't careful. The settlement states that beginning in most likely July, buyers will now be required to sign a buyer representation form before ever being shown any houses. So let's take a brief look at this form. These forms are subject to change before um, summer hits. They will probably have some minor adjustments, but this gives us a general idea. So you'll see here the basic information, names, purpose, length of the term, and then we scroll down to compensation where things get really interesting. Um, side note here, prior to this settlement, when sellers met with an agent to list their home, they would have a discussion about what amount of compensation they would be willing to give to the buyer's brokerage um, for bringing them a buyer. This was typically a percentage of the sale price, and this was listed in the MLS along with the facts and features of the So now when we look at this form, you will see that the buyer agents can change that up however they see fit. A buyer agent could, for instance, charge a flat fee for each home shown, each contract written, an upfront retainer fee upon entering into an agreement, an hourly rate, a percentage of the sale lease price, additional expenses for gas, mileage, etc. And the kicker here is that a buyer needs to sign this before ever touring a home with the agent. How does a buyer know if the agent is a good fit or is going to meet their needs? Buyers, I can't stress this enough. Please interview several agents before ever signing a contract. I primarily work within Flathead County, Montana, but I have partnered with amazing agents throughout the state and even the country as a whole. So if you aren't sure where to begin, please call or text me at 406 890-5390 anytime. I would be happy to send you a few contacts to get the ball rolling. I've also posted in the description box below a link to a questionnaire. Print out a few copies, take notes as you do the interview, and make sure you really click and connect with and know that this buyer's agent that you're interviewing is going to be able to be a good fit for you and your needs. So as you can see here at first glance, in addition to higher home prices and higher interest rates, it would now seem that buyers are going to have to come up with additional funds to pay their buyer's agent or go unrepresented against a professional. But I do have some good news for you buyers, so stick around. Okay, sellers, what does this mean for you? At first, this may seem like a big celebration because you no longer need to pay a buyer broker commission. Well, <laughs> you never needed to pay a buyer broker commission. And let's just take a look at the form to prove my point. You will see here that it plainly states that the seller agrees, consents, and approves of the listing broker offering compensation to other brokers, and then has a blank for the seller and their agent to enter the agreed upon amounts. So you will still get to decide if you offer a commission to a buyer's broker, and if so, how much you would like to offer. There are two main differences for you though, the first being that your offer of compensation, if you do choose to make one, will no longer be listed on the MLS or any MLS affiliate sites. The second is that your buyer now has a buyer representation form signed with their buyer agent or broker, and it states that they will pay them a certain amount of fee for their services. And those buyers are most likely still going to be looking to you to help out with that because they are low on cash needed for down payments, closing costs, etc. So if you want to get that deal done, they are probably going to be coming to you, um, getting creative, of asking for other concessions so that they have enough cash to bring to the closing table. So just be aware of that. 
So what is the takeaway? Buyers, for you at first glance, this sounds very daunting, but don't despair. If you have a good agent, they are going to find creative ways to advocate for you and cover these additional expenses through negotiations, through concessions, etc. And because you have that exclusive agreement, your agent is going to have more confidence to do everything they possibly can to make sure that they get you into your dream home. I can't stress enough that your biggest task as a buyer is interviewing potential agents and not signing anything until you're absolutely certain that they are the perfect fit for you. Again, click the link below if you need a list of questions to ask to get you started. I will also be posting additional videos about whether you even need a buyer's agent, what does a buyer's agent actually do, and what does a good buyer's agent look like. So be sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified when new videos drop. Sell it's important that you start having these conversations with your listing agent and fully understanding the pros and cons of offering buyer broker compensation. If you are offering it, understanding how that's going to be communicated, um, really getting a grasp on what it looks like when you start getting these buyers that have this buyer representation agreement in place and how that affects the sale of your home. You're also most likely going to need to sign a new listing agreement sometime this summer when the new forms roll out. So just be aware of that as well. All right, that is all I have for this week. Uh, do leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Have an amazing week and I will see you next time.